Hi, I'm Marty Nimco. Imagine you're a job seeker, and here are your details. You're expected to support your spouse and two kids. You've had three jobs in the last two years, all at the same level, first level manager. In two of the jobs you were laid off, and in one you were terminated for poor performance. Not surprising, your efforts to land another job haven't, in the COVID economy, been fruitful. You've been looking for four months, had two initial interviews, but that's it. Scared? You decide to invest some of your limited savings on a job search coach. You want a better explanation for all those job losses. You need to figure out the accomplishments to tout. You need to try to get employers to not call your previous boss. And indeed, the coach helps you concoct good sounding answers, plus compelling answers to stock questions such as, tell me about yourself. What's your greatest strength and weakness? Why'd you leave your previous jobs? And tell me about a failure and what you learned from it. Our anti-hero concocts an approach that reduces the chances of the employer contacting your past boss. I should say our, our, the candidate as well with the coach's help. Our anti-hero answered some ads using the tactics that his job search coach taught him and he got an interview. After three video prep sessions to prepare for those interviews, he went to the interview locked and loaded and he passed the interviews. His carefully orchestrated references checked out and voila, he got a good job offer. Alas, his interview days were his best days with the company. From day one, his boss saw how slowly he caught on, that he was doing the minimum work possible, even stretching the allowed hour lunch break. HR told the boss to be patient. Maybe he's nervous. Maybe he needs time to settle in. After all, he did well in the interviews and his references checked out. The fact is, he got friends at his previous jobs to give him laudatory references. Two months later, the boss called him into the office to let him go. Desperate, our anti-hero claimed the hostile environment and that he was set up to fail, and he demanded a major severance package, including a promise of a good reference. All that was likely avoidable. Employers that use the following approach to interviewing are far more likely to hire somebody good. Number one, ask trusted colleagues if they know a quality person for the job. Your respected colleagues are unlikely to recommend someone like our hero in contrast, when you get your applicants from a response to an ad, you have far less of an idea of who you're getting. Two, do a pre-interview. Assuming good weather, invite each candidate to meet you for a little walk, quote, before the interview. In that relaxed, non-interview setting, the candidate is not only more likely to shake off nerves, but is likely to be candid. Start by briefly revealing something about yourself, maybe a hobby, and the candidate, uh, ask the candidate to do the same. Note the intelligence, the passion, and the diligence of the candidate in pursuing that hobby. Then invite the candidate into the building. Usually it's better to have the interview in a quiet corner of a break room rather than a formal office. Again, that encourages candor. Three, do not ask stock questions like those I mentioned above. There's no way of telling whether the candidate is great or is a marionette mouthing what the coach or interview guy told him to say. Even if the candidate was terminated for stealing from the till, he may well say, having gotten his former employer to be silent about it, threatening a lawsuit, something innocuous like, oh, my boss was very social and sort of resented that I wasn't into the TGIF and other employee party scene. Four, instead, ask a question such as, walk me through a typical day on your last job. Listen carefully for an opportunity to drill down to ascertain the quality and quantity of his work. For example, if you said, oh, I did a lot of report writing, you might ask, tell me about a report you wrote, the challenges it adhered, and how you attempted to address them. Five, ask questions that simulate common, difficult problems that the candidate would face on the job. For example, amid COVID, we're having to frequently reorganize and yes, let people go. What sort of process would you create? Six, teach the candidate a difficult but important snippet that he or she would have to know on the job. How quickly does the candidate catch on? How enthusiastic is he or she? How dogged in the face of a challenge? Seven, yes, as is standard, ask if the candidate has any questions. The questions they ask can say a lot about them. For example, what would you expect of me in the first 30 days? That's a stock, a stock question. A far more impressive question is, early in the interview, or, or excuse me, earlier in the interview, you seem to focus on the need for belt tightening. In what ways might that be affecting how I'd be working? Number eight, 
And finally, pay little attention to references. They're too easily concocted. Best you can do may be just to ask the finalist candidate for six relevant references work phone numbers. Call each after hours. The person's outgoing message may reveal if he or she holds the position claimed by the candidate. Leave voicemail such as, I'm considering Joe Jones for an important position that requires above average intelligence and diligence and a solid ability to program in Python. If you think Joe would do that well, call me at, and then insert your number and repeat it. If not, no need to call. Unless you get at least three callbacks out of the six, you well might want to consider another candidate. It is axiomatic that hiring wisely is among a manager or leader's most important tasks. Do it well. In any event, thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like you if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.